Hits and Crits. This video is brought to you by Trading Goblin. What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of On Target. This time we will cover a certain topic, which is list building. And uh, to support me on this, we brought two guys which uh, actually do not need any introduction, like any of you that check stats uh, once in a while at the homepage. You know those guys. <laughs> we will still do a in little intro. Uh, but today we will cover list building with two real professionals in the game, and I'm really looking forward to see some, you know, some, some, some stuff they do when they do list building. So, but before we start, um, thanks for having you two. Um, can you say like just a, I don't know, like one to two, three sentences about yourself um, and why you're here? And uh, yeah, that's about it. Let's start with Martin Iceman. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Martin. I play Song of Ice and Fire like four years now. Started, yeah, basically Christmas 2019 before COVID. I started with Starks and bought basically every faction uh, except for Free Folk and Targaryen because I like the game so much. It's such a fun game. And uh, yeah, then over the years, I started playing tournament and it went quite well for me. Yeah. Great. So Daniel. Hey, yeah, I'm Daniel. Nice um, for having me. Thank you for having me too. Um, I'm also a long-term player of the game since the early days when Night's Watch was released. And uh, yeah, I enjoy list building and tournament play. So I hope I can contribute some thoughts today. Yeah, I bet you both can do. So um, yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So we are my, my, my first question to both of you would be when you start list building, is there like um, what is your goal? Like, are there different goals when you do list buildings? Because I, I just relate to myself thinking uh, when I, sometimes we do intro matches, we do like friendly games on the on the kitchen table, stuff like, you know, stuff like this. So what are the goals? What are you thinking about when you start building a list, uh, Daniel? Um, yeah, I mean, it definitely depends, as you said, right? And I think it's um, good to to start by saying that there are certain different goals that you can reach with list building. And um, the most important probably should be having fun while list building, because list building is, an, for me at least, an enjoyable part of the game and a core part of the game. And um, it's made actually quite um, smooth because you have the app, you have a nice variety of builders that you can use and uh, theori yeah, theorizing about the game, um, envisioning uh, a list, an army that comes together and um, is going up there against um, your opponent's army is quite cool. And um, other than designing a fun list, there should be something like, do I want to make a theme list? Do I want to introduce some newer players? Do I want to create a more thematic list? Or do I just want to you know, make the best possible list because I want to win a seven round tournament or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you should just um, probably carve this out in the beginning before you start the process. Got it. So, uh, Martin, what? how do you see when, when, when we say fun or like thematic list, what would be, how do you approach the, the, the list building? First of all, when I think of fun lists, I think of uh, Renly Rose Knights, and then I need to have as much Rose Knights as possible with uh, Olena and Marjorie, and then my points are basically gone. Uh, that's a fun list for me because I like the Rose Knights. I think they are one of the best miniatures in the game. But as Daniel said, um, the game is so great. List building is a very fun part. You have 15 minutes time. Oh, wait, where's my mobile? Let's check the app. I yeah. want to try this, this, this. Waiting is no, not an issue anymore because, uh, oh, free time. <laughs> <Let's play. laughs> it's, it's okay for me. Uh, it's a very, very fun part. And I think to enjoy the game, you need to enjoy list building. And you have the, the, 
the upper hand side, if you, I don't know if you play 40k, to build a 40k list in those days, you need to have a, a university degree of, I don't know, it's so complicated. <laughs> but <clears throat> here you have basically three NCUs, four combat units, attachment here, attachment there, and the list yeah. is ready. It's very easy. You can do it in one or two minutes. If I may, yeah, is at one point, um, yeah, sure. like, I think one thing that I, if I think about it, aim for is um, also to create sometimes like really balanced and um, list with variety that I know wouldn't bore me playing, you know, like if I have um, all the components that um, are possible to field in this game, cavalry, uh, range, maybe war machines, infantry and that is something uh, i would advise people to seek for in list building um and i think yeah there are obviously armies that are more focused on certain um specialized list types or something but in general you can always try to have a list that gives yourself variety and options in in playing and that's also for me at least translating into fun yeah, definitely. I think I think everyone can relate about what you said about the app, right? I, I, I mean, I mean, it's not even an issue with internet, right? So you, <laughs> even even though I'm like like somewhere in the middle of nowhere and there is like 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 no mobile connection and you still have your war council lab, it's pretty great, right? So uh, yeah, so 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 great, great for that insight. Um, so let's start with the most obvious thing, and I think that that's that. This is not a secret. This is this is well known to everyone. But how do you guys pick your commander? Um, let's say between like pure tournament play, competitive play, and maybe some more like fun games, intro games, or like kitchen table games. How do you pick the commander and why? Um, I think first of all, it's very important to underline that um, your your commander really matters, right? Um, more than more than in, in other games, maybe um, the identity of your army is shaped by your commander's pick, because not only um, he's an important attachment in the game, but he also brings like six of your twenty cards in the deck. So this is something where you should dwell a little bit and take some time thinking what you want to do here and you should remember your goals that you set for yourself right and then you should yeah look at the um the possible the possible commanders and what you want to do and then i think it's fair to say that we have certain types of commanders that you see like in every faction that reoccur basically if you want to say um gregor is an archetype for an offensive commander right yeah. um yeah. you find examples in other factions too, like Great John, for example, in Starks and so on and so on. And you have not only offensive commanders, you have defensive commanders, you have more control type commanders, you have mobility commanders and so on. And I think um, now if you say, okay, I really want to be uh, competitive, you know, I want to um, get the strongest army on the table, then there are choices that are more favorable than others, for me at least. I would always look not on the offensive commanders, for example. Um, they might be strong, um, but in general, in my book, control and mobility is key in this game. So I look for mobility and control commanders. Yeah, the commander okay. thing is pretty important. Uh, also, in my opinion, you need to find your commander. And it doesn't matter if he's strong or not. Let's say if, yeah. you, like, if you like Rob, Rob is... Uh, a mobility commander, I would say he's a mediocre commander. But if you can, if you play a lot with Rob, you know his cards, you know his <clears throat> attachment yeah. abilities, you can do a lot with him because it's your commander and you can uh, have a better learning curve with him. And he can be that guy, even the general opinion on him is, oh, he's, he's not that good. But if he's working for you, that's totally fine. Yeah, and, and yeah. one one thing there is, it's a great point because the list is not good or bad in itself for the most part, but it has to be like, um, yeah, a kind of clothes that really fits you and then it might be very good or not, but um, you have to be good with the list and this game is not a copy, copy and paste kind of game where you can succeed with a list that you don't know uh, inside out. So um, yeah, I can totally see your point. 
Yeah, it was actually like like uh, funny that you mentioned Rob Stark because we we did not talk about that beforehand. But that was my like my 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 first and like my key commander for Starks when I started playing Starks, I was like very much looking into him. And uh, in the beginning, when I started playing, it never worked, right? Because I did the most common mistakes. I put him like in like any unit and I was not really thinking about where he should be. And especially I did not think about activations because in my, in, in, for, for me, Rob really works well in like eight, nine activation lists. Then he works really, really well. Um, and, and again, and we, we come to that later with certain NCUs, especially like Arya, right? Can make the retreat action. She can make maneuver. And when you put him in the right unit, you have something on the table that can pivot March and do, and, and, and do like 14 inches, right? If you play it right. Um, so yeah, so, so what, what I want to say is I was really bad in the beginning with him and I got to the point where I really enjoy playing him even competitively. So even when I get a really good player against me, I can still do Rob and I do not feel really like you know, underwhelmed by him or something. It's really, uh, there, there is a good chance, right? Even though, as you said, he's like, he's like in, in stats, he's mediocre, right? You would, you would probably go for great John and a few others, uh, but, but he's still like really good. And, and like his, his, his archetype is also in each and every list, like there's Arma, right? You have, um, you have the other one on great show. I can't, can't think about the name you have um, uh, maybe, he, he, maybe, yeah. yeah. Theon Doran, is a bit more... Do, yeah. So, so those mobility commanders are also there, and it really, yeah, as you said, it it really comes down what you like to play. And I can just emphasize: keep playing that. Try it for at least like five, six, seven, eight games until you say that fits me or that does not fit me. Because when I play lists the first time, I mostly, a lot of times, do not succeed, or or if I win, I do not win really well. Right? It's like, yeah. So that's a key point in that, yeah. And also there um, is something to look out for. You have your commander archetype and you have your faction identity and they might fit together well or not so good, right? And th this this might indicate that you have to maybe lit work a little bit harder to get, to get behind um, the list in, yeah. in total. One example would be if you think about the new Renly commander in Baratheons, mm -hmm. which is... Um, with his uh, Rainbow Guard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Baratheons, at least the Renly side, is not really known for panic play. But suddenly, this commander offers you, oh, you can deal a panic test with when something happens, whatever. But there is no real connection to the to the rest of the faction at this point. And this is something to, to just look out for, whether your commander choice fits your faction choice or faction identity. So, so one last question before we move on from commanders. So, Martin, there's, there, there's something I always wanted to ask you. Um, when, like we, we talk, there are certain archetypes on commanders like mobility or aggressiveness or like defensive or control, right? So in general, across any faction, are infantry commanders better or calf? Because I'm asking this because you do not see a lot of calf commanders. And I'm thinking that comes from a lot of them, just my opinion is, a, a lot of cards are the same, like Marshall, yep. right by attack. So they basically double, and you know what's coming, right? So, um, so my, so, so is is competitive now? Competitive talk is, or are, calf commanders really a thing? Talking competitive, or are they just for fun? I would say, as Daniel said already, every commander is a thing. Um... I think we have three cavalry commanders. We have Renly three, uh, Stannis three, uh, Britain Tully, and no, you have more. You have, I mean, on the Night's Watch you have. Uh, oh yes, Stark. on the Night's Watch, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and on the Targaryen side you have uh, uh, two. Drawer, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. Draw, draw, yeah, so so there are quite a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not playing Targaryen, so I, this is gone, don't come to my mind at first. But I would say Khal yeah. is a very good commander. And I mm. think <clears throat> cavalry commanders are equal to infantry commanders. They have okay. obviously their benefits come from cavalry. Cavalry is very fast. You need to take out six wounds to um, get a ring off. But <clears throat> in certain types of um, game modes, they need to have more ranks than the other to control the objective. 
there's the downside of Cavalry, but in total, I would say they're even matched. Mm, okay. Daniel, you think the same? Um, yeah, may maybe I would explain it a little bit differently, but in, in, in the results, um, I come to the same conclusion. I think mm -hmm. it's not so much about whether it's Cavalry or not, but it's about other do they offer good good cards and a good set in total? Because like, if you, what are the good cavalry commanders? It's Drogo and it's uh, Benjen, right? They are good. Yeah, Benjen is quite good. Yeah. And they are not the kind of ca typical ca cavalry commander that you mentioned. They don't. I mean, I think Benjen has Marshall, but um, like they have something specific that they offer um, yeah. in contrast to something like Brinton Tully, which is like I don't know. Yeah, it, it's so generic. Um, and I think it's more about this. Um, fact than about being cavalry or not, but in general, I think these two are um, commanders to look out for. Now we got the commanders covered. How do you choose their unit? Because they always need to go into somewhere, and there's the obvious answer: it needs to synergize, right? That's 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 correct, right? And everyone knows that. But is there anything else? Because you talked about faction identity, you talked about the the cards. Um, so could you go like or double down a little bit more on what needs the unit to to provide to the commander more like like more than just building a synergy like elusive escape and swift retreat is there anything else is the is it the cards is it is it uh, again is it the faction all over is it the base deck whatever so um that would be cool let's start with daniel please um yeah i mean i think you are definitely aiming for synergy that's obvious as you said um and then it really for me depends on the commander there are certain commanders like for example let's go with my um go to pick if i think about the style commander in free folk like you can maybe put him in a different list a different unit than than warriors and there might be reasons for it but there are it's pretty clear that he goes into thin warriors um it's also thematic at this point. That's cool, nice, but it's it's just such a good package that you create there. And um, for me, it also yeah depends what kind of commander you have, um, because you could also fall into this trap of okay, I have my great joint commander. That's the centerpiece of my list. I take the most expensive best unit that I get in my roster, and that's where he goes into. And that's something that maybe is not the wise, uh, the most wise choice, but you should also look for efficiency, you know? And sometimes a more uh, mediocre looking five point unit is better than just creating the most um, yeah, dangerous death star that you could think of. Yeah, yeah, true. Maybe as an as a beginning of an answer. Yeah, great, John is a good point. <clears throat> I see a lot of new players picking him and bringing him into a golden company or a great access. And um, <clears throat> the main reason to be great, John, is um, Berserker Tactics, because you, when you go back to back, you can go Sansa, play one Berserker Tactics, top of turn two, go on the swords, pick the swords, grab the card from your graveyard, play another Berserker Tactics, and then the other unit is basically toast. But if you have to sacrifice six golden company dudes, or six <clears throat> great axes for, let's say, whatever. It's not such a good trade-off, but if he's in Cutthroats or Sword Swords, oh, fine. There are six of my Sword Swords gone, but I have slain eight on solid on top. And that's, that's the kind of trade-off thing Daniel um, talked about, because you need to, to get the best out of the commander. And um, <clears throat> there's not the, the, the most death starry unit is not the best unit for him yeah. in most cases. And when you have a different commander, like my favorite commander, Darkstar, you need to put him in Sand Skirmisher because they can, uh, after moving, they can shoot and he has got a free move. So you sh can shoot your opponent twice. And uh, Sand Skirmisher are very expensive, but for Darkstar, Zera, the best unit. And there's basically no discussion about that because you maximize is a uh, lone night card uh, the most with dark stars it was a uh, sense skirmishes mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah so if you have a, like a supportive commander for example 
don't shy away from just picking your standard unit of five points, maybe even four points, and put him there. You know, there are commanders that are um, their job is like making the other units shine. You know, and um, so you should really have a deep understanding of your commander, what's he, what he's assume, uh, yeah trying to do, and then pick the right unit. So I think there's no hidden um, hidden secret or something um, yeah a hidden rule that you can that you can follow here but you have to um, really look and experience it on a um, case by case basis yeah good command good examples for this are Elden Estamont or Harman Ola you can put in basically Ola, yeah. yeah in every unit in the Mattels or every Renly unit in Baratheons and there is it's a better unit they can do whatever you want them to do, they're hard. <clears throat> they are, uh, as their defense goes up against panic, and the cards are good, both have battle endurance, and even some guys like Wardens or <clears throat> Martel Spearman with battle endurance, they are a threat. Yeah, they are. So you guys already revealed some of your like most favorite like picks or where to put them. So. There was obviously from from Daniel. There was Steyr and Thens, right? Which is which is seen quite often. But can you give me another one? What is except Steyr, Daniel? What is your top commander pick? Your most favorite commander pick and um, unit? Most favorite commander pick and unit after oh. Steyr and Thens. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should also mention it's just. Um... Um, a detour we, we are taking here, but there are also commanders which are units in themselves, right? If you think of Baromir, for example, so yeah. that's that's something to to take um, into account, or or Mac Commander, or whatever. Um, what I really like that it's um, it's a niche, definitely maybe even a meme pick, but I, what I really like and um, consider a nice synergy is, is Jamie and Halberts. That's something I enjoy lately. It's pretty cool because J Jamie was for long years of this game a really, yeah, really bad commander. Yeah, <laughs> or, yeah. Or really, really um, bad. Yeah, yeah like um, <laughs> I always felt sorry for him. And um, I started um, a couple, yeah, um, some time ago, I started playing him and exploring him a little bit. And now, I mean, he, he got some buffs over the years. And I think now he's in a decent spot and Lannisters are in a tough spot, so they have to explore right now. And if you put... Him in a five point uh, um, Halberdier unit, which has obviously set for charge, and he offers um, not only um, counter strike but also disrupt, which is you know, you hit me, uh, you're attacking me, I set for charge, I have counter strike disrupt, I maybe have weakened from Pycelle or, or whatever. Um, and he has a card that allows him specifically, all his cards are around him. Like he's a different, he's not a supportive commander. He makes everything about himself, but still you can pick, put him in a five point unit and create some really dangerous package because he has a card which allows him to reroll um, uh, on, on attack, dish out a vulnerable, and he also gives the unit precision. So he has thundering precision, rerolls, vulnerable, and um, yeah, counter strike with disrupt and maybe a weekend. So that's uh, one of the things I do enjoy. Cool, great pick. Martin, what about you? I would go with Ario Holta in Sunspear Dervishes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's a very good. I like, I think <clears throat> Sunspear Dervishes are a very underestimated unit. You can do a lot with them. And Ario Holta, because <clears throat> he's a free attachment, he gives them um, the heal, he gives them the hits and the vulnerable when they are charging. And if my yeah. opponent is going to hit me, I can retreat, <clears throat> they have elusive escape, you can't uh, turn, and then I can hit you again, maybe from the side or from the back, and that's very, very good. And also, with Prince Doran, they are fast as hell. You can yeah. you can march with Doran, they can march on their own, maybe there's a unit of spearmen around, they can shift them, um, <clears throat> cunning ploy, basically, if I have a little bit luck on my hand, they are <clears throat> in your deployment zone round one if I like to. Yeah. Also great pick. I used to enjoy that too quite quite um quite heavily. Uh even even when when uh, Doran was was five points even. 
but now for four points, I definitely see it in like dervishes, as you said, and and uh, all, also Dark Star Retinue, actually. I, I recently did it with Dark Star Retinue, which is, that's brutal, man. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a brutal combo. <laughs> so definitely try it. The only thing, and we, you know, Randall and I talk about it. Um, the only thing when we are stepping on our soapbox is always like there are those units like, I mean, with the honor guards or with the uh, bone lord chosen, it's an obvious thing because it's like in, in, in ruled by itself. But it's like dark star retinue, and dark star does not have the biggest synergy with those guys, even though it's his retinue. And the same <laughs> thing we see now with the revealed uh, Harma Vanguard, right? It's like Harma is an infantry attachment. So I was really hoping to, you know, open up that box, and you have those ponies in there, and there's Harma sitting yeah. on like a war pony riding in a battle. Uh, but uh, yeah, obvious, uh, we see in the back of the card uh, uh, of the box, so there's no attachment in there. So bad luck, right? Also one thing, like um, if because you mentioned uh, Harmer and I think there, there are similar cases because of the way, because of the way how the, um, the what's it called? The, yeah, if you are the keywords basically for um, for factions, right? Or for mm -hmm. um, if you are a whatever house tally unit, yeah. And um, sometimes your commander gives house tally affiliation or whatever affiliation. And normally you would think that your house tally commander wants to be in a house tally unit, which is not the case because you get bonuses out of house tally affiliation, which he can offer to a unit which is not house tally in this case. So yeah. that's something. With in the beginning, I remember, which also f always felt a little bit, yeah, weird for me. Um, but that's also something to to look out for, because that's a point where maybe if you're a beginner, you would, um, yeah, just just give a little bit of um, extra synergy away by doing, yeah, doing the thing that might feel thematic. Yeah, true. All and right. So that's is... some... oh, sorry. Uh, oh no. Here to add is the affiliation. You stay Starks and become Tali. A friend of mine asked me, so they are basically Tali? No, they are both. They are Tali's and Stark. So you get it on top. Maybe it's important yeah. here and there. True. Yeah, true. You, know, you never lose what you are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, true. All right. So that's on commanders and their, their uh, unit bunkers. So let's jump to the next point, which is um, how important are activations? How do you approach the... Um, the 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 topic of activations when you build lists let's say for a tournament so you build lists for a tournament you build two lists how do you approach the topic of activations how many do you need uh, are like seven point uh, lists as good as 10 is can, can you generalize what's the thing i think um in general you should be wary of that, or you should just be clear that this game is an activation-based game. The Song of Ice and Fire, the miniature game, is based around and balanced around activations. So this is important. It's an important part. And um, I, I think we, we said this a couple of times now, but we, you, we are focusing on the important steps here, and activations are important. And in general, more activations is better to have. But this comes at a price, right? The more activations you get in general, um, yeah, the, the, you have worse units, right, for that. So there is kind of, you have to find the sweet spot between activation count and unit quality. And so this is different from faction to faction. If you can get eight activations, that's in general better than seven. But if you offer too much combat strength, this might backfire. Yeah, right? So, and mm. like for Free Folk, for example, you can go 11 activations with Free Folk if you want to, but it's not good, right? And activation advantage in general is good and it gets better, right? More activation advantage. But if you, whether you have three more activations or four more, yeah, that's not that big of a deal. That's not that big mm. of a deal. So I think you should really know where to stop. And for free folk, for example, for me, it's nine activations, which is the sweet spot. Um, Ten, you can do that, but you have to also think and know what is the majority doing. And the majority is doing at the moment seven activations. Seven. Mm -hmm. So if you go with nine, you have two more, which is very good. And 10, 
is also good, but maybe not even needed. And then you have like really poor quality in your in your troops. So um, that's what I would say in the beginning. Um, look where you want want to end. Look what the others are doing, and try to um, get different activation counts in your two lists. Yeah, Martin. Yeah. <clears throat> also, you need to um, remember if your house can do eight or nine activations. Basically, every house can do eight activations. You go with four six point units and four four point NCUs, and then you have got uh, eight activations. But it's not very good. Um, some houses like the Barassians, the Renly sites, they have a hard time to get on eight activations. Lannister, Lannister are fine. Who's also bad at eight activations? Mercs have a hard time going to eight activations or house bombs. Mattel's also right, a little bit. Mattel's yeah, is high yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. <clears throat> and as Danny said, focus on what you want to do and build one high activation list and one normal and seven is normal at the moment so build one with seven and if you are able to build a good eight activation list maybe if you're playing Greyjoys or Starks go for nine or free frog but <clears throat> if you can't build an eight or nine activation list then build another good seven point activation list and the other thing is uh, as an activation game you are focusing on not losing activations can help you also as well so <clears throat> if i have seven activations and they're pretty high standard and i'm playing against daniel with his nine or ten i know my troops are less but their quality is higher let's say if i have two or three units of queensmen i'm not afraid of trappers coming chest to chest to me i will kill them very easily and that is you have to look for the matchup even if you are down on activations, you can still do a lot of good things. And also, yeah. you should keep in mind that you have the pass tokens. Yes. Right? So if I go with, if I come with nine on the table, you don't need to have nine. You only need to have eight, basically, to be a good matchup for me activation wise. So that's one thing I would uh, um, advise. The players from factions that only they they have a more hard time in reaching high activation counts. Um, as Martin said, like most of the factions can do eight, even Mattels can do eight in certain um, builds. And try to look not go like seven seven. I wouldn't advise that, but try to make one seven activation list and one eight activation list because um, you will definitely run into nine from Starks, Free Folk, whatever. Great choice, maybe. Um, and so, with an eight activation list, you are well set up to to yeah to yeah. play at at, at their mm -hmm. level. True. I was talking Is there... and uh, also very important. Uh, we're playing six rounds. Basically, a game is decided in round four or round five, something like this. So you're only playing five rounds. You need you don't need your pass token in round one. You can live with <clears throat> that you have less activations than the opponent. Maybe you can live. Uh, also with in round two and then you can use your pass tokens in the important rounds round three and round four and then i'm i'm even if i have eight then he has nine i can save my pass tokens and then it's not that important that he has more activations than me that's actually an interesting thing because i tend to use to use my activation tokens pretty early um i don't know if that's you, you too because I was now now thinking, but then you said it. That's totally like understandable, and it, it totally makes sense. But I I don't know. I always trigger situations, and now I have to say I mo a lot of times play Night's Watch, right? So so high activation, I mean, is possible, but mostly you don't do. I think Night's Watch is in that seven eight spot with John, maybe I don't know. But um, I tend to use it in round one and round two, and I'm now thinking, is that a thing? Is that is that is that like, like, are are your level of of comp of competitiveness and skill? Does that lead you to using it differently than I do, or is that, or is that really up to the player? Because you said you can use use it later. Daniel now says he uses it early. Um, so does that come from play style? Does that come from matchup? Does that I don't know, right? Um, there are different approaches to to spending yeah. pass tokens. It's, it's kind of a new feature in the game too. 
So yeah. it's not like yeah. that we have years of experience with it. But um, yeah, for me, it's like, you know, um, you said, Martin, games are decided in round four and five, which is true. Then they have to be decided. Some games are decided earlier Yes. also. And I, I emphasize really much the opening phase of the game where you have this stalking, you know, waiting and yeah. who does the first move and so on. And I really want to have my pass tokens there. But if you play, for example, more defensive there and, and don't engage in this, you might might save them. I see my mm. I, I spend them around one and two if I if you know if I play uh, if I have them. I see my opponents, for example, saving them on round one, going with round two and three, which is mm. which makes total sense. And and I think there comes the player element and and uh, the matchup element. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's on activations. I I think there is one more crucial piece to to have this uh, as you call it, Daniel, a symphony we're creating here, right? And the symphony is not complete without the NCUs. So without like any, any um, uh, like, like, like mentioning two and three, let's, let's go first on which NCUs do you need, right? I know this is a pretty tough question because it really comes down to which faction, right? And there are also factions which and we had it like like a few days back, right, Daniel? When we were on on tourney ground, you had the discussion around Lady Val and uh, Lady Dala, right? And uh, like I, I I would say ninety five percent of the time I see Lady Val, and I totally see why. But I like w one of my local players, right, which is also really good. He plays Lady Dala quite intensively, do for the weekend tokens and stuff. So. You cannot generalize, but still, what kind of NCUs do you need? Is there always a healer? Is there always a mobility? Is there always, like, you know, that will be the how we start out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, there are also categories of NCUs, as you said, right? There are healers. There are, um, I don't know, a control type of, like, the, the more expensive kind of NCUs, five points, six points, that they really have a once-per-game game-changing effect or anything. And and first of all, I would encourage everyone, if they approach list building, like focus on NCUs, like don't save on NCUs. NCUs are um, a pivotal part of the game. The game is yeah. about the tactics spot as much as it is about the battlefield. And like, don't go with two NCUs, except you have a special plan because you want as many NCUs as you can get or as you can like sensible yeah, yeah, yeah. Play, play in a sensible yeah. manner. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. and so um, yeah, don't save there and don't be afraid to put like fourteen points in NCUs or whatever, um, because they are strong and they are important. And um, if you know how to play them, that's great. So for me, um, yeah, you 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 are looking for um, a good balance between um, like uh, replacement effects, for example. Um, effects that you can use on zones that don't offer anything for you in the certain situation that you are in. So you definitely want to have one um, NCU that can replace a zone, for example, right? That's something you want to have in your list. Then you want one NCU that has an effect uh, which is not uh, relying on claiming a zone or mm -hmm. whatever. So that can simply be there, can um, activate, do nothing, Sometimes you have to do this to save your activations and still has an effect on the game, right? And if you, yeah, yeah as a general rule, have some something that can replace a zone or somebody have so, somebody who has a general effect, no matter whether it's on the board or not, and maybe something that is really, yeah, giving a huge effect for you. Something like the old Corin, something like Tivin, something like Eddard NCU that can really, like if you have one of these in your lists or not, makes a huge difference like for, for how the list yeah. plays. And if you have, yeah, that, that's some, that could be a general rule um, or a checkbox. Yeah, do you have something like this, something like this, and maybe one NCU that can really help you also if you were, yeah, if you're in a tough spot in the game and you really need something now that can change things up, give something like this. Yeah, yeah totally. <clears throat> On this, um, if you're a newer player, I would say, grab three NCUs for four point and always play three NCUs and 
I'm often asked, but why you can't play two NCUs? And then I talk to the people, okay, fine, play two NCUs into three NCUs. And then you see, and you do it one time, maybe two times. And then you see how, not even bad, how hard it is. Because <clears throat> your opponent can basically do whatever he likes. He has got the last zone. He has got, it's, it's, you can talk about much in this game, but three NCUs are always better than one and two. And then I think there is, there is no discussion about this. Okay. And basically what Daniel says is true. Have some NCU, um, which is replacing the zone. Some zones are better. Some zones like the crown. The crown is a very special zone. It could, can be good, but in the game mode, like game of Thrones, it's just a panic test minus one. And that's not a big deal, but let's uh, stay with Starks. If I can play Sansa and Sansa can bring back my Berserker tactics, the crown becomes very, very good. Um, then you need every, every faction has its, its go to NCU like Lady Ilaria, <clears throat> Uh, Lady Val, uh, Catelyn Stark, um, for Lannisters is what Parcel, which it's it's a good NCU. It's it's it shines above the others, even if, if it's the same points like four points. And pick pick them. That's it's always mm. a good choice. And <clears throat> I think for me, it's always if you have a, a third NCU, I would always go Varus because the Varus can kill units with his sword and his crown effect and he can win you games and in our group we call him lord victory because he can do things for you not i think only a few ncus can kill uh, combat units but he's one of them and because of that i would say pick pick a replacement pick the best ncu and pick lord Varys if you're new to the game and even it works for competitive players as well you can Virus is your third NCU is basically always good, even with the three tokens. No. Yeah, actually, actually, as like like Varus is also I think a really good pick for for beginners. Not only because he's like good in itself, but 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 it makes you think about what your opponent yep. does because you have to react. So there's one plus element you have to think about, which practices so much, like like. Uh, like in the beginning when I started playing and I, I, I went through this process of not, not only playing seven, but playing eight or nine or with three wolves and like learning positioning and stuff. So there's, there's always practice into certain things like nine activations or using NCUs that basically are passively activated, right? Or that, that do, do an effect on your opponent, right? That always helps you learn the game and uh, ma makes you definitely a better player. So um, that's why I actually I actually did not like uh, to have um, Kyburn lose his effect because I, I was really thinking I, I liked it right and having Varus and and Kyburn in this game with this like Varus and anti Varus effect. It was so I, cool. I, I really yeah. I yeah I really liked it. So I, I as we discussed in the video I think he in general now got better but you know that 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 leads too far but. Again, like for beginners, I really like the idea of having a certain mix of NCUs and especially not only replacing the zone, but that's that's the thing where Varus comes into play. I really see him in a lot of lists and it's obvious why, right? And because you said it can kill something, there's also another example within the Night's Watch, right? There's, uh, um, um, what's his name? Awful, exactly. Also, yeah. So Awful, yeah. Awful can replace any zone yeah. and just do like, you know, six dice on three. Yeah. Let's see what happens, right? I mean, it's, it's, uh, and, and he triggers the panic test. It's always cool, but it really comes down to dice, right? Because I had games where he was like really, really bad for my opponent. And I had games where I was like, okay, I don't really care, right? It's like, so against Baratheons is not as, not, not as, not as appealing, but against Free Folk, it can, it can quite be a thing, right? To do mm -hmm. some more yep. damage on that side while I do damage here on that side, right? It's, yep. it's, it's, it's kind of a thing because you can, he cannot do as much uh, regroup and reform and all his shenanigans, right? It's a good thing. So what is your experience, your tournament experiences? How do you prepare your lists and maybe even yourself? 
when going to tournaments that you want to win, which both of you did quite often, right? So how do you, how do you prepare and how do you build your list in a two list format? I'm looking at submissions and uh, normally there are four missions and then I'm thinking, do I need to build a list for a certain mission? We have this um, five point missions, we have three point missions, but we have this <clears throat> equal missions like Feast for Crows or mm. Here We Stand. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and after this, I'm deciding which two commanders I'm going to play. Um, for Starks at the moment, Great John is very good. This Great John nine activations list was um, him in uh, Karsak Loyalists or Cutthroats. Then you play Trekkers, you play Recon and Osha and Mercs with Shaggy Dog. <clears throat> you play double. Um, double spearman and you play the three ladies of house stark and this list can be your <clears throat> go-to list it's okay against seven activation lists but it can compete with daniel's nine or ten free frog lists as well <clears throat> and after this i'm looking for do i need <clears throat> a list for let's say winds of winter winds of winter is a very special game mode and <clears throat> then i build a list for this game mode and i'm choosing the cards also and uh, one of my favorite cards is the card um, I get two points when I have got an unengaged unit in your deployment zone. Mm -hmm. yeah. This I need a wolf and the wolf is uh, agile and mobile enough to run into your <clears throat> zone, stay there and score me two points. Um, so when I play Starks, I need something like this or a friend of mm -hmm. mine built a list with outflanks. He played Martels and he played this outflank guy and he brought them um, behind. <clears throat> That's also a good thing. Um, or maybe you need a, if you're, let's say you're bad at whatever, Clash of Kings or, or Feast for Crows, then just build a list for it and play this list, even if it's not the best matchup for you, but you are comfortable with this list, with this commander, go with this list. Let's say a nice example is you play Stannis Baratheons with double Lightbringers and you bring one light bring us to the uh, one uh, cops pile and one light bring us to the other. And it's a problem for your opponent because it's light bring us. You lose um, the token if you miss the panic test. The panic test is minus three because it's a light bring us and uh, a cops pile. So that could be an approach. And all you need, let's say you're bad at Game of Thrones, you always um, have control uh, trouble controlling three uh, points, build an eight or nine activation list and try it and play it for this game mode That's mm -hmm. my basically my way mm -hmm. okay daniel how do you approach it um yeah i i mean martin made a, made a couple of good points so i think i just have to add some um because in general i also obviously have a faction first and and then then i um okay have an experience probably in the background so it's not like i'm starting completely new over you know <laughs> so that's yeah, something sure. and then and then it's like what are the boogeymans of the meta right now yeah what will i definitely see if i am if i succeed in, in in the tournament um what players are there also I, i'm honest like i'm i'm looking out for other players i know i might see for example in the later rounds of the tournament and what are they playing um that's something i i keep in mind and then yeah i really um want to cover all that with my lists you know if i know that stocks are a thing in the meta i need an answer if i know free folk is a thing in the meta and i'm free folk i also have to think about the mirror for example um and i i see the game modes and i definitely it's not like i i, I engineer a, a list for a specific game mode or whatever okay. but i i i don't want to have an obvious weakness in one of the game modes which is on the list at least mm. and then it's a combination for me if if you if i go into a game um, what are the opponent's lists? What is my list? And I know something like if the opponent has a certain list type, I definitely will pick list A or list B. If I have mm -hmm. Steyr and Varys, and, um, and not Varys, Varamir, I mean, Varamir with Mac, and my opponent brings armor with seven activations, I will take Varamir with Mac, you know, yeah. to crack this yeah, open, sure. for example. Or if I go into uh, something that is really offensive and charging into me like great john i will play styre because this is a good answer 
And then there are certain game modes where my commanders shine. Steyr is very good, for example, in Dance with Dragons because he has a good panic mechanic going um, uh, with Sense of Supremacy and um, he can auto-pass panic tests. So it's, he's really reliant in keeping tokens in this game mode, for example. And yeah, as um, so the things come together and um, that's basically, I think, how you should uh, approach this. And um, you definitely um, need to yeah, look at what you will face, what game modes you have, um, and you should bring variety and basically have an answer to anything that can threaten you. Hmm. Yeah. So good points. Um, we did not discuss this, but I will still ask it to get your impulsive, spontaneous <laughs> reaction. Right? So... To end this video, I want to ask both, and we let's start with Martin first. What is your like secret thing that no, nobody or like only a few people know about you when you play in a tournament? What is your like your secret sauce? Like, is there anything anything like? I don't know, like hydrating a lot of, like, like drinking a lot of water, or is it like, what is it? Do you have like a lucky charm in your pocket or what is it? What is your secret thing that no one knows, but soon everyone will know? My secret thing. <clears throat> okay. Um, I think it's a strange and a weakness for myself. I just play the game until I have an advantage. And then, especially with stocks. I just stop playing the game, just score points and run away. I don't fight as much as I need to. Okay. And maybe that's why I like Martels so much. They are a very good range faction and they don't need to fight you. They just shoot mm. you, they just dance around you and they can bring you down without even go chest to chest with you. And I think that's a thing I like uh, a lot about this game that you uh, can win games basically without fighting. True. So, 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 so the secret is to know when exactly to stop fighting and just retreat and just sit there and say, "Okay, I will win. I, I will win it out long term." Right? I will. Okay, got it. So, Daniel, what's your secret thing? Secret thing. Yeah, I, I really I see like, you hydrating. Yeah. I I seen you hydrate it's, like all the time at the War of the North. Yeah. You were like drinking like I don't know like twenty liters of water. Like, <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> I'm always still, sorry. It's it's not secret. That's why I'm I was hesitating, um, because I always wear like short trousers to tournaments, which is something. Yes. I... <laughs> I I really Martin dress does up too. like Mar Martin does I, yeah, too. Really, okay, maybe true. maybe it's it's <laughs> there's something to it. I really um like to to dress up as it would be a sport event and <laughs> keep hydrated. And I also like to um because I'm I'm definitely also insecure going into games. Um, even though I might not show it, and um, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous too. And um, I really like to um, ease that up if I, uh, yeah, by by doing some, you know, uh, yeah, some some talk with my opponent and doing some mind mm -hmm. games and doing ha ha ha, you know, this is like some bluffing and so on. That's mm -hmm. something I do really enjoy um, after a couple of years now doing this, mm -hmm. and because you also um, might, yeah, convey a little bit of insecureness to your opponent, and you also get mm -hmm. to get to know him. Uh, really quick what kind of guy he is and so on so that's something i i really like doing you you bad bad person <laughs> all right so that ends the video um as always guys if you have any questions comments uh you know arguments what we did not cover what you would like to see in the future or you know just uh, what you want to ask um, martin and daniel just drop it down in the comments below and we will uh, definitely uh, cover them. Or you jump on the Discord and chat with both of them. They're really active on the Discord, really approachable. Just join the Discord and, and talk to them about whatever, list building or whatever you want to ask them. And as always, until we meet again, roll those crits. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.